what is going on guys welcome back to the sigmonado channel my name is aj and this week's cigar journal is going to be a special one i'm trying to get this video out to you guys for thanksgiving and hopefully i get it published in time even though i just released two hours plus footage of my cigar humidor tour i had to make sure i get this weekly journal out for you guys and i hope you enjoy it there are some sticks in here that are absolutely suitable for your Thanksgiving post-dinner cigar. These are some great sticks even for that. And don't forget, smash that like button before we get into this. Subscribe, check the link in the description. I'm gonna keep those links updated with the best deals for you guys. So keep a lookout for that as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. Kicking things off here with the Arturo Fuente Rare Pink in the Work of Art Vitola. This one has got to make up for that signature Vitola that I smoked the other week that ended up being a complete dud and I couldn't finish it. So I wasn't taking any chances with this one. I gave it a good dry box and probably left it in there for like a day and a half or so. So I was ready to light this thing up and have a good smoke. Now, when it came to the light up, I prefer to just toast it. But with these tapered foot cigars, you know, they really are meant to be stoked so it needed some little bit of convincing so I, I toasted it but then I also had to stoke it as well so I also decided to bring out the limited edition cutter and lighter by Prometheus it's this Opus X branded stuff love I love the design on these I got them for like a photo op to do with the other Opus X cigars that I have but never got around to doing that yet so I figured you know what they've just been sitting in the box let me put them to some good use and here they are Anyway, that first third rolls in with tons of flavors. Of course, as always, Fuente always delivers with amazing flavors. And there's no shortage of that. So it came through with a bunch of tangy floral notes, a little bit of red pepper, some cedar wood in there as well. It's funny, man. It was pretty windy and the wind almost took away my bands. And so I had to chase them down when I took them off. You know, I've got like a box full of bands at this point and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. I've seen some cool stuff being made out there, like ashtrays and other accessories, uh, like carrying cases and stuff like that, that people are wrapping in cigar vans that look pretty cool. So yeah, I definitely got to figure out something to do with them. Anyway, in that second third, I had to cut it again to open it up some more, just because the draw was a little too tight. I always tend to do this with Figuardo shaped cigars. You know, they are made intentionally with that tapered head. So the draw gets really concentrated right there, which is great. So I tend to cut off the minimal amount at a time. So I decided to cut it again. And that's when it all clicked. That last slither that I took off, just opened this thing right up. It started producing tons of smoke, which I absolutely love. And then that second, third strength picked up big time and some more spice and cedar kicked in as well. The floral notes were still in there, but they definitely took a back seat. And in the final third, it kind of got more on the woodsy side and some spice and everything got a little bit more intense on that final third. So yeah, absolutely love the cigar. I just got to figure out what to do with those cigar vans, man. Sooner or later, I'll get around to it. So next up, we got the Placencia Eduardo the first. This is hands down one of my favorite Placencia cigars. It's got to be the one that hooked me onto this brand as a whole. And I tell you, man, every time I have one of these, it is always an amazing experience. So that first third on this cigar kicks in with some earthy, and some spicy, and some firewood notes. It was a little different than what I'm used to. I'm used to getting more like sweet and spicy notes from this. But this one felt a little bit more on the darker and smokier side of flavors. The one thing I love about this cigar is the retro hail on it. It's not harsh at all. It's so smooth and I get so much more flavors when I do that. You know, you get, I mean, you get more flavors every time you retro hail, but with this one, it's got to be my favorite every time. Kind of like a sweet and spiciness at the same time, like you would get from like cinnamon. And at the same time, it's got this, this bready flavor. So absolutely love it. And yeah, of course, it, it reminds me of the Don Carlos, which is definitely one of my favorite cigars as well. You know what? Actually, this cigar was probably a little bit too humid for me. But, you know, when I was picking out a smoke, it just jumped out at me and I got excited to have one because I didn't really have one in a while. So I didn't have any time to dry box it. 
And I gotta mention, once again, I just love the retro hell on this. It's probably my favorite retro hell on any cigar. But yeah, I'm a huge Placencia fan, yeah, as you guys probably already know by now. This and the Fuerte Solomon are really ultra cigar experiences. Just the premium cigar experience. If you want it, these are it for sure. And then that second third, I got more of those earthy and woodsy flavors. Man, this was such a long smoke as well. It started getting dark. You know, one thing I noticed about the flavors on this is it has this long lasting finish that really coats your palate for a while. Like I, I remember I can taste the cigar for long after, and I'm not even talking about while I'm smoking it, but even when I was finished with it, I can taste the cigar for long after. And yeah, eventually it did start getting dark outside. It seemed like it was quickly, but this cigar burned for a solid two hours. And into that final third, I got pretty much the same kind of notes as the second third. Nothing really stood out, but you know, of course, just a great cigar experience and nothing wrong with that. And plenty of those flavor notes I love and the experience that I came for. So it was perfect. Love this cigar. And uh, I got to make sure to dry box it next time I have one. Because like I said, it was just a little bit too humid for me. Probably touched it up just a couple times, but it still burned great as well. So yeah, always an absolutely phenomenal cigar. Just make sure you got the time to light one of these bad boys up. Okay, so the next journal entry is going to be this Don Carlos in the Presidente Vitola. Now, I don't have to say much. You guys already know. The Don Carlos line is one of my favorites. I don't want to say it's my favorite because, heck, you know, it's probably my favorite right now. A couple months, I'll have a new favorite. Who knows? But yeah, anyway, right now, it's absolutely my favorite blend. Now, one thing I have to note is, you know, it's getting into those colder months. So, you know, the cigars like the Don Carlos, they have that Cameroon wrapper, which is very thin and very light. So it's just something to watch out for and you might run into some issues here, but I'm not going to spoil the whole thing just yet. Anyway, the first third kicks in with some spice notes, some woodsy notes, and some cedar. And the one flavor note I absolutely love, that cinnamon bread flavor that I get from the Don Carlos. Oh my God, this thing is just scrumptious. All right, it's yummy. And that ash is going perfectly so far in that first third. It's a nice solid white ash with a razor sharp burn line but i started noticing some expansion right here near the burn line when i was burning through that first third and there's a little bit of a crack in that wrapper and you know again this goes back to the weather because it's cold outside and when you're burning your cigar you're raising that humidity so it starts to expand and then you know this can really go bad so i was nervous smoking through it at this point it had a nice beautiful chunk of ash going but going into that second third, it just kept on starting to expand and started to balloon up just a little bit. But I did not want to let that ash go, I tell you right now. Eventually, I did not have to really do anything to it, but just take my time and enjoy it. And you can see the way that ash dropped into the ashtray when I finally was able to tap it off. It was just a huge, solid chunk of ash, just perfect. Luckily, that expansion that was happening on the wrapper didn't get too bad. It managed to work itself out and it kept on burning straight for me. And in that second third, I started getting more sweet bread. I love the second third on the Don Carlos cigars. And that cinnamon was still there, kind of in the back seat. And in that final third, the cedar wood kicks in stronger, some more sweet and spicy notes. And at this point, the cigar was just getting very fragrant. It really reminded me of like a strong smelling incense. And yeah, and thankfully that wrapper made it all the way through, even though it was pretty cold for this cigar and it did not, unravel or just blow up in my hand thankfully and yes this was an absolute treat of a cigar loved it if you have not tried the don carlos i highly recommend you go out and get one and try it amazing cigar the next cigar on our journey for this week is going to be one of my favorites and that's the oliva milanio Serie v and i want to let you guys in on a little secret if you know where to look you can find this stick for as low as five dollars that's all i'm gonna say that's it. So this cigar is hands down one of my favorites. It has been since the first one I tried it. Okay, so let's talk flavor notes. In that first third, I was getting those nutty flavors that I'm used to with the cigar, kind of like cashew and almond flavors, as well as some coffee. And another thing I've come to expect from the cigar is a great draw every time in that silky, oily smoke texture. Absolutely love it. So honestly, this kind of pisses me off because 
I had a full box of these and this is the very last cigar. And this one is absolutely blowing me away. It tastes so good and everything about it is perfect. And I'm realizing that every single one before this that I smoked needed more rest time. Again, with these online orders, you gotta let them rest and the longer they rest, the better. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually genuinely pissed that this one is actually tasting so good. That's just great, right? The flavors on this right now are just blowing me away. I mean, I'm getting peanut butter. I kid you not. I have this written down right here. Peanut butter. Yes. Like, this is why we do this right here. This is why we, I enjoy smoking cigars is because you come up on these amazing flavor notes and these great experiences like this. So, yes, from nuts and coffee to even peanut butter in this first third. Absolutely blown away by this, but at the same time, genuinely pissed off. But, you know, that burn tried to get away from me. And I had to correct it and it was okay. I was still in that first third, just gave it a couple taps with the lighter and it was good to go. And into that second third, the flavors just did not stop. This, it started giving maple syrup notes and my goodness, the strength on this cigar was full, all the way full. It was so strong at this point. And I started getting this leathery sweetness and actually there's more sweetness than I'm used to with the Oliva Milano. But uh, it was definitely welcomed. Absolutely delicious cigar. And in that final third, we get into some earthy and spicy flavors. And this is where this cigar for me took a huge step back. And I started getting a couple bitter hits from it. This is actually bringing me back some traumatizing memories of bad cigars where I would get notes like this in that final third. And it reminded me of that. So I start pulling out all the tricks I can to try to revive this cigar, you know, cutting off a little bit more off the cap, doing a purge with the lighter to try to clear up some of that trapped humidity in there. So I can just try to finish this thing and still enjoy it. But at this point, once you're struggling like this with the cigar, if it's like, if it just keeps going like this, it's pretty much just kills the moment. So yeah, amazing cigar. Loved it. The first third, second third, that final third. It was still, you know, smokable. I still finished it all the way through. However, it just, those couple bitter hits and, you know, and you have to know some of these cigar tricks to kind of manage your cigar and revive it and keep it from going bad and keep the experience from going bad. Other than that, a great cigar. I had an amazing cigar week and I hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys on the next one and I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving, guys. Peace.